Father, we just thank you, Jesus, for today, Lord. I just thank you so much, Lord, as we're starting off today, 2023, Lord, our first Bible study, Jesus. I know it's starting off with power. It's starting off with a bang. It's starting off by letting Satan know that whatever garbage he was up to in 2022 is over with. 2023 is the year of blessing, of harvest. It's the year, Father God, where your people raise up like never before. This is the year, Father God, where, where we have our breakthrough, Jesus. This is our year that, Lord, we're not playing games with the enemy. We're not playing games with the world. We're not playing games with nobody, Jesus, Father. We're here to go after everything you've called for us. We're here to do everything you called us to do, Jesus. We're not going to be lukewarm this 2023. We're not going to be sitting, taking a back seat no more in the name of Jesus. This is the year that we raise up. This is the year that some people raise up in their divine calling, in their ministry. They'll start getting used, Lord. This is the year, Father God, Lord Jesus, that we just honor you, that we glorify you, we sacrifice for you, that we obey you, Jesus. And we know that, Father God, you, your word says that you bless those who diligently seek you. So we know, Lord, we're not just seeking after and working hard for nothing, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord you're going to bless us, Father. And we thank you for that. We thank you for tonight's Bible study, Lord, that we know in the name of Jesus that every time you speak, God, it does something inside of us. It heals us. It changes us. It break us, breaks things off of us, Lord, that doesn't belong in our life. And it makes us more like you, Father God, that tonight, Lord Jesus, that let us walk in your divine, perfect will, Jesus, because there's some here, Lord, that, Lord, that you, they're confused about what your, what your will and your plan for their life is. But, for Father, I pray today this would bring some confirmation to some that are needing some confirmation regarding their plans, their visions of where they're going in this 2023 and i pray jesus that this word may touch the deepest parts of their soul of their heart of their mind jesus and it, you would bring clarity father god and confirmation and joy and peace father i just thank you holy spirit because i know you speak through me lord i'm just an instrument i'm just a vessel i'm just a mouthpiece that's all i am father and all the glory is for you jesus and i just thank you for that in jesus name amen and amen amen so I'm so excited to be back, guys. <laughs> we had a good time in Tennessee. I got a story to tell you guys. It's actually perfect. It goes with tonight uh, tonight's message. Um, how many of you don't know that everything that goes on in this world, uh, it's according to God's purpose. Everything that God uh, allows to happen, there's a purpose behind it. Even in our own stupidities that we do, God will use it for his glory. God will use it. Amen. Um, so we were gone for... Uh, a week and some change we left to tennessee that's why we didn't have no church service decided to get away with my wife my son uh, my mother-in-law came along with us as well just to have some time to get away and there's nothing wrong in in the lord that you take a vacation with your family uh but i had a learning experience about something right because we're supposed to be transparent you know sometimes people look at men of god and pastors or prophets and kind of hold them on a pedestal but reality is we all make mistakes we all learn from certain things and i made a and i wouldn't say a huge mistake but i made a mistake while i was out there right and uh it's so funny because that's why sometimes it's good in christ to um relearn fundamentals and uh learn certain things again um so we was out there and um we were we had booked a cabin in the mountains in tennessee and got in um pigeon forge and when we was out there, we got there and surprisingly it was packed in Tennessee. I guess everybody and their mother decided to be out there. And um, we was over there and um, the road that goes up to the to the cabin got covered in snow from that snowstorm. So we were not able to stay there. Um, the Airbnb person was like, hey, listen, um, if our cleaning lady is able to get up there, you guys can go up there. If not, uh, we'll see what happens. But so pretty much we were like on standby. And uh, while we were on standby, we were looking for hotels and there was no hotels anywhere close by, not even in a hour radius or nothing. Like I probably might have to drove like four hours in order to find a hotel. Right. But thank God we found a hotel. Uh, we stayed there and um, uh, we stayed there for one night. And we were asking the hotel people, like, please let us stay a second night because we don't know about this cabin thing. And they're like, listen, everything's booked. But glory to God, when that happened, somebody canceled their hotel and we were able to stay there a second night. 
and we stayed in a different town that we had originally planned. So the cabin thing didn't work out. Nobody was able to clear up the roads or clean the, the cabin. So we weren't able to stay there. I said, all right, that's fine. We stayed outside of the town and we started going to, there was really nothing but to do there than museums. So we started visiting some museums. But before I get to the museum parts, um, I had I had just met a, a tremendous woman of God. She's a she's a, a pastor of a church, I believe in in, in Jer New Jersey. She has come. Uh, my mother in law knows her and is on their side of the family. And 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 she came by my house and um, tremendous woman of God. You could feel the anointing, the presence of God with her. She had came to my house. Uh, I was able to minister to her, prophesy some things, conf confirm some things, and I never met her, never had a conversation about her or anything. And um, I was able to speak some things that she said, man, nobody knew that about me or that I prayed that to God and you knew it and and vice versa. She did it for me, too. <laughs> she confirmed some things and prophesied some things that God was going to do in my life, tremendous things in my life. And um, it was on the money. But before she came inside my house, she did something kind of funny. And that's why I said it's important for us to be transparent as Christians and admit when we're wrong about certain things. Uh, if not, we become prideful and unteachable. But um, um, before she came in my house, she was praying outside my door. <laughs> she was like, Lord, if it is your will, I ask you for permission for you before I go inside this, you know, this family's house. Give me the peace that if it's you want me to go in here, I'll go in here. And for a, and for a second, I was like, yo, like, that's a little too much, man. <laughs> like, just go inside my house and call it a day. Right. And that's how I thought for a second. She came in my house. Like I said, I, I ministered to her. She ministered to me. We had a good time. Um, you know, that was it. Now, fast forward. This is now, you know, days later, we're, we're at this hotel and we visit in this museum. I was at this museum. And uh, I had no idea what was in there or what, it, what kind of museum, like just whatever. It was a, a wax museum, right? So I decided to go in, have some, some wax museum with some people or whatever. So I was like, oh, it's cool. Then they had a section in there that says, Lord, don't go in here if you have a weak heart. So I was like, what could they possibly have in there, right? The curiosity of man. So I was like, let's go. I'm going to go in here real quick. I went inside the museum. And it was like uh, pretty much a section dedicated to satanic evil things and it had a statue or a wax wax figure of Satan. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> I walked out of that room and I was gone and um, they didn't, you know, I stayed away from that area. Right. Um, I left, didn't think much of it, went back to my hotel room that night. I went to take a shower. While I was taking a shower, the faucet came on by itself. <laughs> Disclaimer, this isn't me. I wasn't like uh, just imagining things or thinking about the museum or anything. Because Lord knows I don't fear Satan, no demon, no nothing. Those you Y'all see how I get down. I, that stuff don't scare me. So I was showering and um, the faucet came on. And I was like, what the? <laughs> um. I was like, all right, maybe I left the faucet on or maybe this place is old and <laughs> maybe because it's Tennessee. I don't know. So I didn't think much of it. Didn't say nothing to nobody. I went to sleep, slept like a baby. And that was it. Um, we went to stay at a different town, stayed somewhere else, had a good time. Then we went to a different place, a different town, stayed at a different hotel. So two hotels later, um, we're in Nashville now. And um, I was there with... Um, Laying down, I was pretty much about to fall asleep uh, with my wife, my son, and my mother-in-law was in the other bed. The lights turn on to the room by itself, and it's a lamp that's like old school. You got to click the button for the lights to turn on, and you hear the click, So if, and like somebody turned it on. And as soon as the lights turn on, my mother and my mother-in-law, who's on here and can confirm it's true, she was like, what the heck? <laughs> and um, I got up right away and uh i was like you know what was like all right that's the second time that something comes on by itself and this is two different hotels this is not that the same so hotel true. room and um so that happened and the light the light uh came on and i immediately went to discern and i felt a spirit i felt a demonic spirit it didn't feel nothing strong it didn't feel like anything um 
super powerful. So I was like, how did this one slip by the radar? Right. And um, I started rebuking and um, I started rebuking and I started praying. And within a minute, that little sissy demon took off leaving. And we all went back to sleep and we all slept like babies. No problem. No issues. Couple, we spent a couple another day there. Nothing ever happened. Um, went to Georgia. Uh, was there for a little bit. Then we came back to Florida. When we the, the day we came back home, I came home. I sat on my living room couch, was watching TV, and I saw a demon just cross my kitchen, whoop, like super fast, just swing by my my um my 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 kitchen. As soon as I saw the spirit, I was like, "Oh hell no!" <laughs> I was like, "Oh hell no!" One thing is to go inside the ho hotel rooms. Another thing is to uh, show up to my house, right? And uh, and 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 for those who are super religious, how did a demon get in your house? Well, the same way a demon can Satan can show up in front of God's throne and ask for permission to mess with people, right? So, um, so I saw it, and as soon as I saw it, I called my wife. I said, "Well, I, I didn't." Well, then I did, still didn't say nothing to her. I just started to pray, and um, felt it leave right away. That happened, and then uh, maybe like twenty minutes later, we had put my son to sleep, and um, as soon as we put him to sleep, me and my wife just sitting down watching. He started screaming, crying. As soon as he started screaming, crying, I got up. My wife's like, "Hey, you know, put him back to sleep," because sometimes he does that. When I went to his crib, the Holy Spirit told me right away, pray tongues over him and rebuke spirits that don't want to let him sleep, and he can feel it. Soon as I said I rebuke every demonic spirit, he went knocked right out, went right to sleep, and um, I came out of the room. I told my wife, I said, "Look, as soon as I went in there, I spoke tongues and I rebuked spirits, and he passed out." And she was like, "I was doing the same thing." So it's crazy. We didn't even like agree on doing that. We just happened to be doing it together at the same time in different rooms. So that was the Lord. So we were like, "All right." Clearly, the enemy has something up his sleeve, and we need to start praying. As soon as we started praying, I felt this. Now the big demon, I could feel it in the room, and um, it was mad because it couldn't touch me or my my family. But it managed to find its way to our home, and I started rebuking, and I asked the Holy Spirit right away. I said, "Holy Spirit, how did this thing, <laughs> how did this thing show up in two hotels room and 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 show up to my house, right?" And the Lord was like, well, first of all, it already left because it respects your authority, but but it was able to follow you. It's been following you since you were at that museum. And I was like, oh, shoot, like, how was it able to follow me even at the museum? The Lord was like, you didn't ask me if you could go to that museum. And I was like, well, I didn't know that thing was in there. The Holy Spirit was like, yeah, but I did. And if you would have asked me about your whereabouts, I would have told you if you can go in there or not. And then the Lord had also rebuked me and said, also, the lady that was at your house, you said she was too much because she was praying outside your door uh, a little too much, a little over the top, but you can never be too much with me. If anything, you should be like that before you enter into anyone's house. And I said, Lord, I am sorry. <laughs> and uh, that's the reason why I'm sharing this, guys, is because we got to be transparent. And sometimes, like I said, we look at people and put them on a pedestal and people make mistakes. So I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. And um, right away, you know, I asked Lord for forgiveness and stuff. And that spirit obviously left, can never come back either. But it goes to show you how the enemy can slip through the cracks. So. This is the bigger picture of why I'm sharing this. You guys have known me. I guess some of you guys have known me for a while. I've been saying, oh, my dream is to go live in the country or Tennessee or somewhere and where there's land and this and that and um, move out of Florida. I'm not a big fan of South Florida no more and all these different things. So the Lord had took that desire. And I said, Lord, why did the cabin go wrong in this hotel? And to make matters worse, we were at another hotel didn't turn out too well. And when we were trying to leave the hotel to find another hotel, this thick fog 
that was not there at all <laughs> when we got to the hotel. I'm just I literally showed up within minutes, took over the road where I couldn't see nothing. I'm talking this thick fog in the night where I told my wife, I don't know if we'll live to make it to the next hotel. So a lot of things or weird experiences kept happening. It was like something out of a movie. And I asked the Lord, the Lord said, this is what would happen if you decided to move to Tennessee without asking me for permission. Everything will go wrong for you. Because sometimes as Christians, we have this perception that whatever we decide to do, God is just going to back it up and be there and everything's going to be all right. No, you got to, when you're going to make decisions, and this is the reason why this is the message for, 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 for today. In 2023, God is about to start opening some doors. God is going to start moving some people around. God is going to start using some people and God's going to open opportunities and doors. And you need to ask God for permission. Sometimes we overlook things and we think we're so spiritual and we think sometimes we know everything. And I'm here to tell you, you don't know everything and you need to ask God. I see me, Jamie. I always ask God before I do. And I say, but I never, I never, I, I wouldn't say I never, but I, I guess I lost uh, that in me that I did. I didn't, I stopped asking God about my whereabouts and, you know, with, with minor things, because even for houses and areas and stuff, I always pray about those things. But minor things like visiting someone's house who I let come over my house or, you know, a museum or someplace for those things, I kind of belittled it, you know. And, you know, the Bible says acknowledge God in all of your ways, not just your big plans or your big moves. You got to ask God for permission about even the smallest things that you consider insignificant. Why? Because even the smallest things about your life, they're significant to God because everything is supposed to be towards our purpose, the plan and the vision that the Lord has for us. And, you know, uh, I actually got this message to preach today uh, last night. At four in the morning, the Lord woke me up. So those who got me on social media saw I posted at four in the morning. The Lord woke me up and said, Warren, you need to tell the people a heads up. You know, you know, when I was coming back into Florida from Georgia, the Lord was like, Jamie, Tennessee is not in my plans for you. Georgia is not in the plans. Texas, nowhere of those places are in my plans for your life. Florida is in my plans for your life. And when I came into Florida, I fell back in love with Florida. I just kept thanking Jesus that I live in Florida. And I, I'm like, in, I still I got this whole week of work off and I've been like in vacation in Florida and I live here. Because we got to acknowledge God and we got to put our plans in his hands. And sometimes we think that if, um, certain plans or certain things that we planned for ourselves, if they don't go a certain way, we're going to be miserable. Uh, things are going to be bad and they're going to suck. And all these different things. No, if you align your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, everything about you to God's plans and his will, he's going to make it enjoyable and desirable. So. um, Sorry, lower my phone. So, you know, so that had happened. So the Lord was like, Jamie, I, I allow this to happen to show you that that's not in my plans and you need to stay in Florida. My plan and my vision is in Florida. And as much as you think you want to leave, there's nothing there for you anywhere else. And I came back and I I love Florida. <laughs> I'm back to falling in love with Florida. And, um, you know, and the Lord told me it's here and not far because sometimes we put see we put limitations on God about certain things. Right. It's like, oh, I got to move to another state because the housing market is good there or the land is cheap or this and that. Listen, we don't go chasing opportunities. The Bible says the blessings and the opportunities come chasing us. When you're a child of God, I'm here to tell you and, and, and encourage you that what God has for you, when you are following God, those things follow you. You don't need to go looking for an opportunity, looking for a blessing, looking for something elsewhere when God is going to bring it to you. Amen. How many can say amen? God is going to bring these things to you why because the bible say first seek the kingdom of god first and all these things will be what they'll be added on to you so god adds it to you you can't try to add it on to yourself he adds it 
the, the Lord was speaking to me at four in the morning. He said, let them know I'm going to be adding some things, but so will the enemy. The enemy is going to try to add things on. Oof. The enemy is going to try to add things on to some of you guys on here. God, the enemy is going to uh, um, try to compete with God, which he's no competition for the for the record. He's going to open up doors, houses, jobs, opportunities and things. Why? So you stray away from the vision that God has for you. See, when Jesus came to earth, right? And it's crazy because I'm preaching. I'm not even reading my notes. See, when Jesus came to the earth, he was here to establish a spiritual kingdom, an eternal kingdom that we would be able to reign with him forever. So that was the mission. That was the vision why he came down here, right? But Satan came along and tempted him during his fast and told him and promised him a bunch of his opportunities and said, I'll give you the kingdoms on earth. I'll give you things, earthly things, and started promising him all these things when Jesus was coming to fulfill a spiritual kingdom on earth. And Satan, with his copycat, want a blessing, establish a physical kingdom and all these different things, right? So the enemy always tries to come when God's trying to bless you with something, just like if, when God's trying to bring you the man of God or the woman of God for your life, guess what Satan does? He brings his man and his woman too. And it's going to look like something good because the Bible says Satan comes like an angel of light. That's why you need discernment. And that's why you got to ask God for permission. Don't just do things and take things and go into things because it feels right, sounds right, looks right, and smells right. You need to ask Jesus, Lord, to you, is this right? Right? The Bible says that there is a way that seems right to the man, but leads to destruction. Because there's sometimes we take on things, we walk into doors, we just go to places, and we expect the hand of God to be there. But listen, that path may lead you to destruction. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. See, if you go to that area, if you move to that state, if you go into that town, if you go into that home, if you let this person into your life, it may seem right to you, but it will lead to destruction. And God is trying to stop that. God is God's trying to protect you. Listen, if a door don't open, leave it closed. Sometimes as Christians, we're like, no, I need to persist. I need to push and I need to blah, blah, blah. Listen, when God has it, he opens the doors. You don't got to force the door open. Amen. But see, that's how Satan gets us to, to, to uh, hurry us up, uh, frustrate us, uh, push us and start making us uh, trust in our own understanding. You cannot trust in your own understanding. Bible says, do not lean on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You got to trust God. Oh, God, but I don't know what the housing market, if, if my dream house with land is over here, trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. God, I don't want to be single. I don't know where this man or woman is going to come. From. Don't trust in your understanding. Trust the Lord. God, I don't know how I'm going to get used for ministry and, and pray and preach and do these things. Don't lean on your own understanding. God, how am I going to provide financially? How am I going to be able to do this for this and that? How am I going to have this child and family and all these different things that we worry about, right? Because we worry about all these details of our life. What you need to do is stop leaning on how, what does it mean to lean on your own understanding? That's your brain trying to figure out how you're going to do this? How are you going to afford this? How are you going to pay for this? How are you going to put this together? How are you going to go look for this? How are you going to make this opportunity happen? And God is saying, don't do that. Don't do that. Because that is called leaning on your own understanding. And he, what is he calling us to do? To trust in him, right? To trust in him about where you're going. So when, so when this happened, right? With, with this museum and all this stuff, the Lord, the Holy Spirit told me, Jamie, you didn't ask me. I was like, man, I got to ask for permission, like a little kid again, right? To about a museum. But the Bible says to enter into the kingdom like a child. <laughs> I am a child of God. So since I am a child of God, guess who I got to ask? I got to ask daddy in heaven what I should be, where I should be going. So, and, and it's so, and, and I was like, God, I never had this issue before though, right? I've been into places and maybe there was worldly things and demonic things. No demon followed me. Um, before, why is it, why now? And the Lord was like, because the level of blessing and anointing and the things that are about to happen in your life, I need you. It, now it's a higher standard of accountability in your life. See, God, 
there's for those who are listening with more blessing with more things that God going to give you, there's going to be a higher level of requirement for your life. There's going to be a higher level of accountability over your life because the much is given. Guess what? The Bible says much is expected. So God was like, demons didn't follow you before. And this, this stuff, it's because you're at a different place now. There's a different level of blessing. And, and I need you to be more careful because before you didn't have certain things, you weren't at a certain place before. So these things were an issue, but because where you're going, there's a different level, new level, new devils. <laughs> Amen. How many new level, new devils. So the Lord was like, my people need to be very careful in this 2023 about what decisions you're about to make. Because there's some of you on here saying, I'm going to do this decision. I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to move here. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do that. And the Lord is saying, just because he's blessing you and providing and opening a door doesn't mean that you can just go and do these things freely and expect God to back you up. You must ask him for permission. Why? And the Lord was saying, was telling this to me. This year can be the year of blessing or it can be a year of disaster for you. Why? Because like I said, there's a way that seems right to a man, like the Bible says, but it leads to destruction. That is why the Bible says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. He will make your path straight. You need to acknowledge God and ask God about what you're about to do. Because there's some of you on here, you're about to make a move. You're about to make a decision. You're about to do certain things with your life. And my question to you is, have you asked God for permission? Did he tell you it's okay to go there? Is it okay to do this? Is it okay to do that? Did he tell you that it's okay? And some will say on here, that's crazy. That's ridiculous that I would have to ask God for permission. He's your savior, but is he your Lord? <laughs> Is he your Lord? When you have a Lord over your life, what does that mean? Your life is not yours anymore. <laughs> That's what people don't talk about when they, when they talk about they gave their life to Jesus. He is Lord over your life. Since some, so that means your life is not your own anymore. And because it's not yours anymore, you don't have the right to do with whatever you want with it. Unless you don't want him to be your Lord. <laughs> That's why some of us, we go through things, we get depressed, we get sad, we get broken hearted, and um, we go through all these different uh, 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 scenarios, and then we're asking God, God, heal me, please help me. Why am I struggling? Why am I going through this? And all I got to ask you is one thing. Did you even ask God to do this? God, why am I struggling like this? God, why am I? Who got you in this situation to begin with? Who told you to be with this person? Who told you to do this and do that and move here and go there and do that. See, you didn't acknowledge God, but now you want God to come rescue you. Praise God. He can rescue you. But save yourself the trouble and start asking God for permission. Amen. Is this message hitting some of you guys? I know this might be for some of you guys who needed to hear this. So, you gotta so you gotta ask yourself, God, did I ask you for permission? Some of you may be saying, "Well, it's I don't I didn't I didn't feel like I needed to ask for permission because it's it's common sense. It's common sense to just go in this door. It's common sense for me to just do this. It just makes sense. Why would God not want me to do this? It seems like the right thing to do, right? But like I told you earlier in that scripture, there's a way that seems right to a man but leads to destruction see the thing that you're doing want to do your want where you want to go and all whatever it is it seems right see that's what the bible says it seems right to who to you but it leads to destruction so how do we know what to do ask god because see it seems right to us but 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 it's going to lead to destruction, right? Like I said, in this 2023, there's going to be people that come into your life. Maybe this is the guy I'm supposed to be with. Maybe I'm supposed to leave the man I'm with and get with this man. That's Satan sending his person. Or oh, maybe I'm supposed to get with this girl. And, um, you know, she goes to church and, and makes me feel good and more than this one and this and that. And maybe I'm supposed to leave. 
Satan sent his pawn. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to buy this house and move over here. Maybe I'm supposed to go out of the state because that's just where the market is good and, and this and that. So are you chasing an opportunity or are you chasing after God? And God has presented you this opportunity and he has given you the green light. You know, this is this. Oh, I'm about to start a ministry. I'm about to start preaching. I'm about to start doing my calling. And this is this you that seems like this is the right thing to do. Or is it God that told you and you asked God for permission to do so? And at the time, he also told you to do it. Right. Tennessee, things didn't go too right. When I got home, the Lord said, you didn't ask me, Jamie. <laughs> you didn't ask me. You trusted in your spirituality, but you didn't trust in me. See, that's what sometimes some of us Christians do. We trust our spirituality, but we don't trust God himself, the spirit of God. And that's why that demon was able to follow me. Praise God. He, I sent him, I pack, made him pack his bags and go right back to his wax museum. Because, uh, listen, Satan can visit you, but he cannot live with you. <laughs> I'm going to say that Satan, Satan, you can visit me, but you can't, you can't live with me. And, and, and why? Because he's able to biblically. If you look at the Bible, Satan visits God's throne. He can't live there though. And, 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 and that's what he's going to do with some of you guys. Satan is about to visit some of you guys with opportunities, with people and with things that seem right. But guess what? You got to say, Satan, you can visit me with these things, but you can't live with me. See, when Jesus was fasting, who visited him? Satan visited him. But guess what? He couldn't stay. The Bible says that when when Satan came and was tempting Jesus uh, with many opportunities, uh, Jesus sent him packing back with by uh, uh, responding with scriptures. And guess what it said that Satan had to leave him alone for a season. What a butt kicking that you got to give Satan that he got to leave you alone for a while and recover. Right. That's what we got to do this 2023 year. Satan, you can visit me with it, whatever opportunity and things. I'm going to kick your butt. I'm going to send you packing and you're going to have to leave me alone for a season. Amen. How many could say it on the chat? Satan, you're going to have to leave me alone for a season for this butt kicking I'm giving you. Right. So he can visit you, but he can't live with you. Amen. So. um, So the Lord was giving me that in his message. We cannot stray from the vision. I wrote this. I'm going to read it. Uh, I don't even know if it makes sense because I wrote it at four in the morning. <laughs> so uh, forgive me because the Lord just woke me up. My eyes were barely still open. and I just started writing. See, when God wakes you up, wakes you up three, four in the morning, don't think I got to go to work the next day. How do I got to go to sleep in my sleep. Spend that time with God. Don't worry about it. All right. You'll sleep. You'll sleep when you come back from work. <laughs> um. So. I put here in this 2023, God is taking his people to another level, to different places. And God is asking us to do one thing. That is to ask him for permission beforehand. We need to consult with the Holy Spirit before we go where we're going this year. That means literal places. Do you plan on buying a house, going to another job, visiting certain places, visiting people? God has a vision for our lives this 2023 you cannot stray from that vision. That is why you must listen to his voice concerning our whereabouts. God wants to take us to our breakthrough by entering his perfect will. Will you listen to his every instruction? <laughs> this is what the Holy Spirit, I, I was writing this, but my like my eyes closed. This is what the Holy Spirit told me to told me to write. And I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this. Um I'm gonna read this story in the Bible. And it's going to be uh, eye opener. And that's why I said it's so important that we're listening to the voice of God and the instructions of God. Because Satan will send people and things to stray you from the vision and tell you things that go against what God has told you. So there's a story that I'm about to read. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the book of Kings, first Kings. It's about a prophet of God and a man of God. God had given a mission to a man of God. It doesn't give his name. And there is, he finds himself on his mission. He meets a prophet of God, not a false prophet. And you're going to see why. Some people, because listen, I, th this generation is filled with people calling everyone a false prophet and a false teacher. You could be a prophet of God. And just because you got a prophecy wrong does not make you a false prophet. 
Why? And I'm going to show it to you here because just because you're a prophet of God doesn't mean you can't sin. You still can sin. You can still lie. Doesn't make you a false prophet. What makes you a false prophet is if you're continually giving prophecies going against the word of God, going doesn't line up with his word. Just because you got one prophet or you made a mistake or you made a sin doesn't mean that you are a false prophet. And I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. And this is a story of why you need to stick to the vision that God has spoken for 2023. Stick to what God has spoken, where the vision is, where God has called you to be, where you're growing spiritually. That's where you need to be, where God has shown you you need to stay there. Stop thinking that the grass is greener somewhere else because I'm here to tell you water your own grass. Amen. So we're going to go to. First Kings chapter 13, verse 1 to 34. It's a lot of reading, so please pay attention because this story is really important. Amen. This is the scripture that God gave me at four in the morning for us to read. First Kings chapter 13, verse 1 to 34. It says here. And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against uh, against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a child, uh, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and you he shall sacrifice the priest of the high places who burn incense on you, and, moan, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart. And the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God who cried out against the altar, altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Then his hand, which he stretched out towards him, withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar was also was split apart and ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Somebody's trying to put their hands on you, and because God is with you, he makes their hand crippled. Amen. And it says here, So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and he became as before. Then the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, if you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Key word. See, he recognized he can't just go and eat and be with wherever, right? And it says, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told them all the work that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king, and their father said to him, Which way did he go? For his sons have seen which way the man of God went who came from Judah. Then he said to his son, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it, and went after the man of God, and found him sit sitting under an oak. Then he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go in with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place, for I have been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by the way you come, he said to him. So look, this man of God, God had given him a specific mission. He said, don't go here. Don't stop at no one's house. Don't eat. Don't drink. You see, he, had to have, he, he didn't have permission from God to just stop at anyone's house. He, he wasn't even allowed to go a certain um, road, right? And it says here, he said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me. Now, this is the prophet of God speaking to the man of God who's on this mission. And it says here, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water. And it says here in parentheses, he was lying to him. <laughs> and the Bible didn't say it was a false prophet. It says prophet of God. So now he was lying to this man of God. God had given him a mission, told him, don't stop at no one's house. Don't eat nowhere. You need to go here and don't go this path. Now comes this prophet of God. And now he's trying to stray him from the vision by saying, well, God told me it's okay, it's okay for you to come stay at my house, eat and drink. 
this is so important for 2023. And it says here, so he went back with them and he ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it happened as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah saying, thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment, which the Lord your God commanded you. But you came back, ate bread and drank water in the in the place of which the Lord said to you, eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall now should not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled the donkey for him. The prophet whom he had brought back when he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him. Remember what I said earlier? There's a way that seems right to a man, but leads to destruction. So here we have this man of God who God gave him specific instructions, didn't give him permission to go to certain places. He gets convinced by a prophet of God who was a prophet of God who decided to lie and guess what happened and got him killed and it says here when he was gone a lion man rode him and killed him and his corpse was thrown on the road the donkey stood by it the lion also stood by the corpse and there men passed by and saw the corpse thrown on the road and the lion standing by the corpse then they went and told told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt now, when the prophet who had brought him back from the from the way he heard it, he said, it, it is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The same guy who lied now was cleaning his hands with it, saying, that ain't my fault. He's the one who decided to, to, to disobey God. <laughs> right. See, see, if you decide to listen to, to yourself and to other people about what you should do with your life and all these different things. Yeah, they'll be held accountable, but who's going to pay the price for disobeying is going to be you, just like this happened here. And look, and, ch and check this out. <laughs> it says here, Therefore the Lord delivered him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to him. And he spoke to his son, saying, Saddle the, dank, the donkey for me. So they saddled it. Then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road. Donkey, his corpse. Okay, I read that. The lion had not eaten the corpse. Uh, okay, I already read that part. And it says, And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. Then he laid the corpse in his own tomb, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. So it was after he buried him that he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the same which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines in the high places which the cities of Samaria will surely come to pass. After this event, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but again he made priests from every class of people from high places, whoever wished he consecrated, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing was the sin of the house of Jeroboam, so as to exterminate and destroy it from the face of the earth. So basically, this guy's dead. You know, he didn't obey what God, the instruction God had given. God clearly did not give him permission to stay at this man's house, nor to eat or drink. This man lied. <laughs> and check this out. After he lies, he does prophesy correctly. He lied and said, the Lord told me it's okay to stay at my house. But then he, this man gets killed for disobeying. And the same one who lied, God spoke to him and told him, hey, prophesy to him, he's going to die. And there's going to be a line that's going to tear up his body. And it happens. That's why I said it's not, it's, don't be quick to call somebody a false prophet. Because right there, he lied, but yet God still spoke to this prophet after, and he still was able to prophesy what the Lord has said. But what, what, do, we, what do we learn from this story for 2023? If God has spoken something, you stick to it. Amen. If God has told you something and, and you would say, oh, I don't know if God has spoken what he has said in his word. What God has said in the Bible, in his word, you stick to it. I don't care how difficult it seems. I don't care if it doesn't seem right. I don't care if the other opportunities seem right. If God has spoken something for your life. You need to stick to it. And if, if you're like, oh, well, I don't know if God has spoken to me about something yet. Well, don't you dare make a decision if God did not give you permission to do it. Because and and be careful because there's going to be people, maybe false prophet, maybe a right prophet that's lying and can come and stray you from the vision. But guess who's going to pay the price for it? You will be. 
just like this man of God ended up dead. It's why? Because there's things that seem right. See, I, I this wax museum, I was like, it's just a bunch of people in the wax. It seemed right, but I had no idea there was a wax figure of Satan in there. You see what I mean? It's because God sees ahead of what we're trying to do. Oh, I'm just going to get into this relationship. I'm going to move here. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then we think this seems okay. It seems right. There's nothing wrong with it. This, uh, uh, how could this be the wrong thing? But God sees ahead. And that's why you got to ask him because he sees the journey ahead. And he and he's the one that's going to tell you, don't go that way. That way is going to cause you pain and trouble and problems. Save yourself it. Don't move there. Don't go by there. Don't start the business here. Don't start the ministry yet. Don't do this without getting permission from God. Why is it important? You may say, why is it important to ask God for permission? You need to ask God for permission. Like one, like I said, you're his child and he's your daddy. Proverbs 3, 5 to 10, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. See, in 2023, with the things that God is going to do, acknowledge him. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to direct your path. He is going to show you if that's something you need to do. He will give you the green light. And it says here, um, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. See, that's the continuing verse. Don't be wise in your own eyes. That's what we do. What does it mean to be wise in your own eyes? That you think you know what you're talking about. That you think you know what you're doing. That you think what you're about to do is the smart move. Oh, this is the smart opportunity. This is the smart. Look, look how this is coming out. This, this has to be the right way. It says here, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with what? Your possessions. In 2023, that's what you need to do. God, I want to buy a house or buy a car, do this or do that. Honor God with your possessions. It says, and with the first, because sometimes we say, oh, God doesn't care about material things. Why is he saying here? Honor the Lord with your possessions. See what I mean? You got to acknowledge God and what you do, where you're going, and even the things that you have. It says here, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. See, God is about to bring an increase into our lives. How many could say, thank you, Jesus? God is going to bring increase on some of you guys. God is going to bring some increase financially. And what does God expect from you? It says here, and with the first fruits of all your increase, you got to, it says, so your barns will be plenty and your vats will overflow. Your, you know what first fruits of increase means? That's your tithes and your offerings. So when people in the Bible, God gave to them, what was the first thing they do? They immediately when they received, they gave to him. See, see, people want, oh, God, I want you to bring increase and in financial blessing. For what? If you don't even give to God. See, God, God, see, God gives so you can be a giver. Bible says he gives seed to the sower. God doesn't give a seed to the person who only wants to reap. He gives seed to the person who sows. I've been saying this for a while. I'm telling you, and God is going to bring blessings, going to bring doors. And this is what he's saying. Right. It says, and, and it says, so your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. That's the blessings God's going to bring in 2023. Your barn is going to be filled plenty and you're going to overflow, but you got to be a giver because it says here and with the first fruits of all your increase, you got to give your first fruits of your increase to God. Amen. And, 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 and you, you need to, like I said, to much is given, much is expected. And, and you got to ask God for permission. You're going to say, oh, well, who else asked God for permission in the Bible? Numbers 22, 13. It says, so Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. <laughs> That's another. This was a, a prophet of God who, who was asked. Somebody asked him, hey, can you go here with me? And what did he say here? Go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. You need to ask God for permission about where you're going with certain people. Sometimes we want to bring certain people with us to certain places and certain visions. And you got to ask God, God. Do you even want this person 
part of the vision? Do you want this person part of where you're taking me and my job, my business, my this, my that? Did you ask God for permission? Because guess what? Then that person is going to be a problem later, right? You got to ask God for permission. Like I said, it's very important that we ask God for permission. Why? Because that's how you submit to authority. Like remember I said in the last Bible st study, submit to authority, you'll operate in authority. Many people didn't ask God for permission. I gave it I gave it an example once in a Bible study in the book of Acts. The Apostle Paul. Um, the Apostle Paul was um was on uh wanted to go preach somewhere. And um the Apostle Paul wanted wanted to preach somewhere. And um the other disciples said, um, hey. Uh, don't go there. And what did Paul do? He thought he was more spiritual. He didn't want to listen to his spiritual leadership and said, no, I'm going here anyways. And didn't want to listen and didn't submit to his uh, spiritual authority. Guess what happened to Paul? He was pr in prison, got beaten, went on a ship and ended up on a shipwreck, ended up on an island. And so much hindrance happened in his life. Why? Because he didn't submit to authority. He didn't want to listen. He didn't acknowledge God. And he didn't even acknowledge God through the spiritual leaders that God had put over his life that he didn't want to listen. That in the book of Acts, you can read about it, how he got shipwrecked. And they said, all right, man, Lord's will be done over your life. Right? Some of you guys on here, it could be the biggest blessing 2023. Or you're, you're going to shipwreck. You're going to shipwreck. And some of you guys, in this 2023, some of you guys have already started off this year bad. You already lost your fire for the Lord. Some of you guys, these little two, two weeks of no church service, you've already lost your fire. <laughs> and, and the Lord has already shown me that about some of you guys. And you would say, oh, but that's because there was no church, Jamie. This is all your fault. Listen, I am not responsible for your spiritual life. Your relationship with Jesus is one on one with him yes church helps but your relationship with god is not dependent off of church and i've been saying this for a long time we're going to enter tribulation one day there will not be maybe they won't let us do zoom we're going to probably have to gather uh, secretly who knows because it's biblical right what are you going to do you know like i said this 2023 Everybody wants a blessing and God to do this and do that. Oh, I want God. I want you to heal my marriage and I want you to fix this. And you need to come to church. You need to get your life right with Jesus. You need to you need to start sowing and giving and sacrificing for God. If you want this blessing and you need to start getting the OK from the Lord. You need to start getting the OK from the Lord about what you're doing and what you're up to. And it's time that it's time. That some of you guys, man, 2023, maybe this first couple of days of, the, of this year, you've already started it off bad. But it's not too late. Man, this is the year of harvest. And I'm telling this to you guys, and I, and I said it, and I'm going to reemphasize. The harvest is coming. That could be a good thing, and that can be a bad thing. That means all the bad that you sow, you may reap all of it this year. But if you turn from it and you do things right before God, guess what? You'll be all right. And you'll receive the blessings. I told you this. It's the prophecy that God gave me for 2023 is a year of harvest. No more excuses of not coming to church. No more excuses of why you don't pray. No more excuses of why you don't fast. No more excuses why you don't show up to church or do this or do that or why. I'm telling you, if you decide to play around with God, I'm, I'm and now I'm going to preach real quick. This is off the message. If you decide to play with Jesus in 2023, you are going to reap. That'll be the biggest regret of your life. I'm, there's a separation coming and I've been saying it and people don't take it serious and you're about to see it. If you don't get right and live for Jesus and for real, and you want to play church or you want to play God or you want to just wait around and I'm not coming right now and I'm going to do this and do that. You are going to have the worst year of your life. You will have the worst year of your life if you don't decide to do things God's way. But if you do things God's way, this will be the best year of your life.
you will reap the biggest blessings you ever had. God's going to open doors, provide houses, all the stuff, the business, the ministry, the calling, all of it's going to fall into place if you put God first. But you got to put him first. Don't ask straight from the vision. Some of you guys are straying from the vision. The enemy has already been tempting you. The enemy has already been messing with some of you guys about straying from the vision. Do not stray from the vision. The enemy's already tempted. I already know this. And if, if, if this is you, I want you to confirm that this is, this. say amen, that the enemy has already tried to stray some of you guys from the vision. Maybe leave the church, go to a different church, move to another state, go do this, buy a house far away, maybe get into another relationship or what, whatever it may be, right? How do I know? I'm here to tell you the enemy's tempted me to stray from the vision, go move to somewhere else. If this is you, or maybe spiritually, you have already been strayed from the vision. You've lost your fire already. You're like, dang, 2023, I'm not that fired up. You're, the enemy's tempting you to stray from the vision. Get on fire back. Get your fire back. Because listen, and I tell this to you guys all the time. When I hit up some of you guys and ask how you're doing, I'm not asking because I want to know. I'm asking because I already know. Some of you guys are already not doing good spiritually. And I'm telling you, get it together tonight. We're back in business. We got church on Sunday. Get it together. Because like I said, doors are going to open. Opportunities are going to open up. Blessings are going to come. And all different things do not get left behind. Don't be the person. You know what? And I'm actually going to cut off the recording. So for those who are watching on YouTube, sorry, you cannot watch the continuation because now it's personal. God bless you.